Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ghani and in this video I'll be sharing with you the recording of the live question and answer session that I did over on the Instagram platform on Monday the 11th of March. So this is going to be my last l weekly live video that I do just before taking some time out to have my baby but fear not, there will still be question and answer content that the G&G team are going to be sharing with you while I take a little bit of a break from this style of videos. So we, you will still be able to get your little weekly fix of new fabrics that have come into the shop and then hear the answers to some really useful sewing and dressmaking related questions to keep you inspired and informed and always learning new skills here. We always like to encourage you to be trying out new things and learning new things and yeah, getting fresh inspiration all the time. So you will see me read out the questions and comments that come in live as well. If you do have a question that you would like us to cover in a future video, then you can just leave a comment on this video as well. The g, &G team will pick it up and then we can add that to our list of future pre-recorded question and answer videos that go out on the YouTube channel. So if you're new here and you haven't subscribed to the channel already, just remember to hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on subsequent videos. But I'm going to switch over to the live recording now and I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you very soon. Um, so welcome if you're joining live and it's lovely to see you. So if you are a regular viewer of my weekly lives at eight o'clock, this is going to be the last one that is live for a little while while I just have to take a little break. Well, I have my baby, um, but the G&G &G team are going to be still answering your questions. You can, of course, always just email or call the shop as well, but we are going to be making like a little sort of Q&A type video to share with you on a Monday evening at eight o'clock. So you can still get a little G&G &G fix on Monday at eight o'clock. Um, we've got a lot of people in the UK so far. The Scottish Highlands, I think we had somebody in Shetland as well, in London, in Leicestershire, in Evesham, in Aberdeen, in Staffordshire, in Manchester, in Soggy Sully Hall. Yeah, it's pretty so soggy here as well. And Luton, and Tamworth, and Kent, in the south of France. I bet it's not quite as soggy in the south of France, in Edinburgh. Um, Oxfordshire, Puerto Rico. I don't think we've had anybody from there before. Welcome. Orkney and Bath and Warwickshire. Um, well, it's lovely to see you all. So I do have a pretty jam-packed hour ahead. I've got quite a lot of new fabrics to show you, which is exciting. And then lots of your questions to answer as well. So if you do have any questions as I'm chatting along, please feel free to ask. I'll try and keep up with them and answer them if I can. Um, and if I can't, then we'll add them to the list for future q and videos that will go out. So, so yeah, before I get started, I just want to remind you, I'd mentioned it last week as well, that we have a little competition running tomorrow where you can win a copy of the new Fibre Mood magazine. Um, this is their new special edition one with lots of lovely patterns in it. Um, and it comes as like a little bundle with some nice fabric as well, which goes with one of the patterns that is in the in the magazine so you can sort of try it out and um, so yeah maybe if you wanted to try out fiber mood before then enter the competition and um, so if you if you go onto the profile like the you know the profile page for Guthrie and Ganny and then in the top right there's a little bell and if you turn that or if you turn on post notifications then it means that you'll see it and um, so so yeah that will be going out tomorrow um, and then the other thing that I wanted to just remind you about, if you're nearby or you can come and make a special visit to us over the Easter holidays, we've got a couple of really cute little sew together workshops. So it's like grown up and child can come together and make the, how cute are these little kind of bunny ear pouches for Easter. So they are running, it's in the first week of the holidays. It's like a daytime thing. So that on, they're, they're on Monday, the 25th of March and Tuesday the 26th, so you can book your places for that fun little workshop. So they're listed in the workshop section on the website. Um, and then, yeah, a lot, of, so, okay, so some people are mentioning about the kits. 
Uh, we've got somebody in Seattle and somebody in Sweden. Welcome, welcome. And Fife in County Down. Um, so yeah, that's the next thing on my list is the kits because this is the first live I'm doing since we released the kits last week. So maybe you've maybe seen them already or seen pictures. There have has been like videos and photos and stuff on Instagram already and obviously they're on the website, but I wanted to show, show them to you as well. And somebody was asking, is the fabric that is included in the kits gonna be available by the meter? So yes, we usually do have a bit left over because um, we always sort of get like a little bit of a buffer for how many kits we're going to make. So two of the bomber jacket kits, actually I think there's maybe one left of one colorway, one, one colorway is totally sold out. Um, but if you email us, then we'll add you to the inquiries list for the fabric when it, when we'll when we'll sort of sort it out all the kit stock, and then it gets listed by the meter. So it should be in like a couple of weeks' time at the most, really. So it's the wardrobe by me, Amelia Balmer, and this is the sky blue colorway. So at the moment. I think there's one left of these ones um, of this colorway and it's yeah it's just a really nice little bomber jacket and we've got some ribbing at the cuff and then it's got ribbing at the hem band as well and then a lovely zip which tones nicely with the fabric um, and then it's lined on the inside as well so it's got a really lovely nice soft viscose lining so the other two colorways of this one where, um, oh, I'm causing an avalanche at the side of me here. Um, the other two colorways were the olive green, which is this one. And we do still have some of these ones left. So they are available on the website. And then this is the one that's sold out. But as I said, we probably will have a bit of the fabric left over. So if you really like this fabric, then email us and let us know and we'll let you know when it's available again. Um, but yes, it's such a lovely pattern. I totally love it. Um, and yeah, the fabric was made especially for us from one of our French suppliers. It's a jacquard. So the pattern's like woven into the fabric. It's really nice. It's such a beautiful fabric. Um, so yeah, that is the wardrobe by me, Amelia Bomber. Um, lots of people saying that they can't wait to receive their kits. Yeah, so we do, we're, get, we're getting there with the posting. There are still some that need to be posted, but hopefully the majority of you should be receiving them very soon. Um, and then the other kit that we had is the Fiber Mood Billy Trousers. So this is just a really, really lovely, like classic, basic trouser that is going to be really easy to pair with all of your handmade tops and blouses and everything. Um, and we've got it in three colours, which I think will match lots of things really nicely. So it's a corduroy that we've got. We've got it in tan classic navy and then a really lovely green colour as well. So it's just quite a simple trouser um, with a fly front and it's got really nice inseam pockets at the side and then some bust darts at the back. And then it's, it's described as having a tapered leg, but the leg is quite straight. Um, and then they are quite cropped, but we include enough fabric in the kit if you did want to lengthen them like more, um, more towards the like a fuller length if you didn't want them cropped. Um, so we made these ones for the very lovely Rosie who works in the shop. So when you, so you'll see her, her lovely long legs modeling them um, in the little video and in the pictures as well. And, and yeah, I'm one, once I'm not pregnant anymore, I'm like desperate to make some of these for myself because yeah, I think they're just a really good, they're a really good base that I think you would get a lot of wear out of because they are just gonna go with lots of things um, and like really easy to mix and match with other things that you might have made. So we do, we do have, all, we do have all of these colorways still in stock um, and we probably will have some of the fabric left over as well. So again, if you just wanted the cord fabric that's in here, then again, just email us. We also show you how to do this really cool binding finish on the inside. I always like to show you sort of extra finishes to just give your project a special touch. So yeah, we show you how to make continuous bias binding and then use it to just finish off the edge of the fly and the waistband as well. So that is all in the top tips video. Um, Somebody's saying they're looking forward to receiving my first fabric order. That's exciting. My bellies are almost finished. They are so comfy. You're so quick, Megan. So quick. <laughs> That's great that you've almost finished them. Um, it is such a really lovely fabric. It's got a bit of stretch in it as well. So it's nice, nice and comfortable. Um, I am going to take the jacket off now. I'm actually starting to get quite hot. Um, I also seem to be like... <laughs> 
like really breathless. Um, I guess it's because my lungs are getting squished. Um, so, so yeah, apologies if I'm sounding a bit out of breath. Um, what other fabric could the trousers be made in, please? I'm not a fan of cord trousers. They are just quite a sort of simple classic trousers. So you could make them out of like a suiting fabric or a lightweight wool. Um, we do like a blended bamboo twill fabric as well, which is really nice. You could make them out of that as well. I think you could make them out of like a, a, a rami or a more heavier weight linen too for like a summer pair. They would work in that too. So yeah, it's quite a versatile pattern really. Um, can you recommend a fabric for the Vogue 50th anniversary? DVF wrap dress. Um, I don't know that pattern off the top of my head. Um, but if it's a wrap dress, then a viscose usually works really nicely. And then that leads me on to showing you some of the new the new fabrics that we've got because we've had some really beautiful new viscose linen prints in that would be really lovely for a wrap dress as well. Um, so so yeah, the just arrived section has lots of new things. Hannah just enabled lots of listings today. So it's a little bit of a feast for the eyes of lots of really, really nice new things. So do, do just generally take a look in the just arrived section. Um, but I have pulled out some new things to show you as well. Um, so let me just see what I'm going to show you first, right? I'll show you the things on the bolts first. So some of you might recognise this fabric. It's new colourways of ones that we did include in a past kit. It's a double gauze, but it's like a two-sided gingham. So it's like a larger gingham check on one side and then a smaller gingham check on the other. It's really, really lovely. Um, so this is the rose gingham, double-sided cotton, double gauze fabric. We've got it in three new colours. I actually can't remember what the third colour is, but there's this rose. And then I think maybe it's like a light blue colourway. Um, and then there's also this one, which is the peppermint. Um, so it's, yeah, it's like a bit more of a sort of soft, minty kind of green colourway. So then that's got the contrast there too. So it's really nice. You can have like contrast in your garment. So it might be maybe like a cuff or a collar or something or a pocket. Um, is, is, you know, the opposite, like you could choose what way round you wanted it. Um, so yeah, a really lovely fabric for the summer. Um, somebody's just, say, Emma's just saying, sorry if I missed this, I was late joining, but with the black bomber jacket fabric be available by the meter? Yes, just email us and we'll let you know when. Um, I'm thinking of making the MS worker trousers, love the pattern, but thinking I'd like lighter weight pair for summer. Do you think they could work in a tensile twill? Um, tensile, tensile twill is, is generally usually pretty good for trousers. I can't think of that pattern off the top of my head, but tensile twill is generally good for trousers. Um, would the gingham work for the, the quilla fibre mood? Yes, I think it would. That's the one that I think I was wearing it a couple of weeks ago. It's like a sleeveless little sort of top, but it's got kind of gathered panels at the side. And I made it in a larger scale gingham which was which we still have actually it's a viscose linen um, and it yeah it worked really nicely yeah I think it would work in that um so yeah three new colorways of that one and then we've also had this is a new one here as well this one is the ribbed navy stripe cotton jersey fabric so it's a cotton elastane and it's it's ribbed as well so it's really lovely and stretchy and would be really good for tops and yeah, little, like a little vest top even. So it's it's nice because it's got a bit more texture. It's like a stripe, but with a bit more texture. So we've got it in a really nice navy. And then we've also got it in this sort of, what have we called this color, moss. So it's like a kind of nice muted sort of green color. So you, you never have enough stripes, can you? Um, and then this one is really beautiful. I like this one. It's got a really nice sort of embroidered kind of, pattern in it here that's a bit like a grid and um, it's kind of like a sort of cappuccino-y kind of latte sort of color i wouldn't say it's cream it's got a bit more kind of color to it than that floral grid embroidered eyelet cotton viscose so it's actually 58 percent cotton and 42 percent viscose so it does have like a little bit more kind of drape to it because it's got the viscose in it i think that'd be lovely for for a nice like oversized shirt, simple little top. You could even make kind of beach cover up style thing with it, with like a, maybe, you know, something like the Sovereign Sylvia robe or something, you know, something that's like a, 
kind of looser sort of jacket would be nice in that as well. Um, and then I can't actually remember if I showed you these last week or not. It's the new Liberty London collection, which is now all on the website as well. It's really cool. This one's inspired, can you guess, by the underground map system. Um, and it comes in two colorways. The other colorway is a bit more, this is more sort of muted colors, but this has got, um, this, this is more muted colors. The other one is more like vibrant, brighter colors. Um, so there's that one. And then the other ones, there's just so much, there, there's so much detail in them. It's one of those Liberty prints that when you look really closely, you almost like spot something extra every time like the bus and then there's like a swan in the lake and the London Eye and the bridge and everything. So yeah, it's just a really lovely, nice, like conversational detailed print. Then this one here is, that comes in another colorway as well, that one. Then there's this one here, which is a bit more like a map. Um, and again, there's just so much detail in that. I'll open it out a bit more so you can like see more of the map. Um, maybe actually I'll hold it this way. I think that might be upside down, but hopefully you get the idea. Like you got, you got the River Thames there and then, you know, all the different landmarks and it's got lots of writing in it as well of like different places, um, which is lovely. And then the last one that we've got, actually there is another one that's got the Liberty store on it that I didn't bring over, but yeah, you'll see in the just arrived section, this is just like a bit more of a kind of colourful one here and um, that's got lots of different classic London landmarks in it. So yeah, it's a really, a really, really nice collection. If you're a fan of Liberty Prince, it's definitely one that is a good collection one to add. Um, somebody's asking, would the striped ribbed fabric be okay for the cocoa top? Um, might kind of be on the thin side, to be honest. I'm not sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna say no, but what we do have for the cocoa top is we've still got some of the fabric left over that was in the cocoa kit, and we do have a navy stripe and like a sort of sagey green stripe in that as well. It's actually sort of on the rolls behind me here. I don't think you can see it. I think the YouTube people can see it, but you can't see it. And um, this is it here, and it's a more stable loop back French terry, so this is better for the cocoa. Um. Okay. Next question here is. I brought a lightweight t-shirt from Vinted and the neckline is really stretched out. Any advice on how to fix it? Not familiar with sewing jersey. Um, I guess you could, you could probably like cut the neckband off and make it smaller. So make, and then, then refit it again. You could try that. Um, any pattern suggestions for the Liberty? I did actually do a blog post that was all of, like loads and loads of ideas of what to sew with Liberty Tannel on. So there's loads of different inspiration in that. Um, but it's really, especially I think when it's like quite a detailed print, you sort of want the fabric to do the talking. Just some kind of like simple top is really nice in that as well. Um, like the Helen's Closet Ashton or something, you know, there's lots of sort of simple top patterns. Um, I quite like it to make blouses and shirts as well because it presses so crisply, it's really nice. But yeah, there is a blog post on the website that's all about different things to sew with Tannel on. Um, I love the neckline on your kilo wrap dress tonight. Did you do something different as mine is always higher? Yeah, I did actually. So the I actually ended up like folding the neckband to the inside and stitching it down, which sort of made it a bit bigger. Um, like the neckline a bit sort of bigger and wider. Um, but yeah, I still just like use the pattern pieces and I just, cause this is a viscose jersey, it's really, really stretchy. So it was able to sort of fold in and then I just stitched it down. Um, okay. The Wren blouse and patina are perfect for Liberty prints. Yes, I would agree with that. That's the chalk and notch Wren blouse and the Friday pattern company patina. Yeah, they would be both lovely for the Liberty prints. Um, okay, so. Then the other new things that I've got to show you, we're still on new, um, is we've got this in a few different colorways as well. I love this, this big bold print here. This is the Dusky Lavender Squiggle Cotton Voile Fabric. So it's really, it's really like a kind of, yeah, like a, like a cotton lawn or a cotton voile. So it's nice and lightweight. It's very sort of floaty. I think that would be lovely for nice tops and dresses. Things with gathers would be good as well because it is really lightweight. It's very, very soft. Um, and it comes in three different colorways. So 
I'm pretty sure it's three. I've only got two beside me here just now, but that, yeah, that's the lavender one. They are all in the just arrived section as well. And then I've got this really nice, oh, you just balance all these rolls. Um, this one is the soft olive. So I'll let me open that out so you can sort of see that colorway. I think it's also the kind of thing that you wouldn't really worry about pattern matching as well. I wouldn't worry about that. Um, does the purple and white have a warm or cold feel as a colorway? Um, I feel like that might be quite subjective. I'm going to say warm. I'm going to say warm because it's not like that is more of like a kind of creamy color. It's not white. So that kind of gives it a bit more warmth. Um, short sleeve patina always look great in Liberty Lawn and the fringe dress pattern. Yeah, the fringe is another good good option as well. Um, okay, the next ones that I've got to show you that are new are, let me just kind of pile everything in there. I've got a lot out tonight to show you. Um, these are some absolutely beautiful viscose linen prints. Um, so this one here, let me open it out so that I can show you what it is and then I'll read you the name. Oh, this is stuck. Um, okay, so here it is here. So it's quite a small, smaller scale one. And this is the Sky Stipple Viscose Linen. So it's mostly viscose, it's 70% viscose and 30% linen, which means that it does have quite a lot of drape and swishiness, as you can see. Um, I think it is like, I don't think it's really that see-through, which is good. So it makes it nice and versatile, like dresses, you don't need to line them. I think you could make some nice summery trousers with it as well. Um, so yeah, a really lovely printed viscose linen. Um, and then the other two that I've got are a bit more sort of floral in nature. Um, so we've got this one here, which has got a nice navy background. This one is the Midnight Stems Linen Viscose. Again, 70 viscose, 30 linen. And so, so yeah, you can see it's like a bit more of a floral print really nice, the drapes really lovely, got nice sort of flashes of pink and a kind of purpley in there as well, so lots of really beautiful colours to pick out there, which I think would be nice. Um, and again, yeah, this type of fabric is just really versatile, like even, ju even jumpsuits you can make with it too. Um, then we've got this one, which is a bit brighter here. That I, I love the colours in this one, it's really beautiful. Um, let me pull a bit of that out to show you. Um, so this one is the cream watercolour floral viscose linen fabric. Um, so that's this one here, which is really lovely. Very nice and bright and summery and cheerful. I think that's really nice. Um, and then we've got, I'm just going all out and showing you lots of things because I'm, yeah, I, We've had so many new things in and because this is my last live to show you, I want to just make sure that I show you lots of things because I like showing things. Um, then this one comes in two different colourways here. This one is the Cream Linear Sketch Viscose Fabric. Um, so it's a bit more of a sort of abstract pattern. If you're not into florals as much, then it's a nice option nice and drapey because it's viscose so it's also got it's like a the reverse of this so it's like mostly black with bits of white uh, or like cream rather than mostly cream with bits of black if that makes sense and um, would these viscose linens work for the sunday robe or are they too lightweight is the sunday robe a merchant and mills one is that just like a sort of dressing gown i think they would work it's obviously going to be like quite a drapey sort of you know very kind of yeah like loose and drapey vibe to it but i th i think I, ca I can't see why not if, as long as you were okay with that if you could make anything with the abstract what would you make as in this one was this one the abstract um no that was the linear sketch i can't remember what the abstract one was now sorry um i'm not sure Okay, the next one was this. We also have a couple of colorways of this one. Um, this is the blue column block stretch viscose fabric. 
So it's, it's like a bit, so it's a viscose twill that's got a little bit of elastine in it. So it is a woven fabric, but it has a bit of stretch because it's got elastine in it. Um, so it's a bit more of a sort of like modern print as well. Quite a large scale, as you can see, in relation to my face. Um, yes, that one, you called it abstract. Okay, I guess I was maybe like saying it's more abstract in nature. I, I think I would make, what would I make in that? I think like a nice um, a dress would be nice, some kind of top um, would also be nice. I don't think you need to pattern match it. Um, this one is really versatile because it is a little bit thicker. So I would say it definitely is like good for, you could make trousers with it because it's not opaque at all. It's just heavier weight than the other plain weave viscoses because it's a twill weave. Um, so it is a really versatile type of fabric. And then this one here, which we do have in another colourway as well. This one's so summery and bright. I love this one. Um, this is the Hawaiian Blue Boho Swirl Viscose Fabric. Um, I think that's super, super summery. That's really lovely. Um, a nice skirt and that would be nice for summertime. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's all the ones that I brought over. It's quite a lot of new things, but do check them all out in the Just Arrive section as well. There is a lot. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get on to the questions that you've sent in beforehand. There are quite a lot. I'm gonna try my hardest to get through them all without getting completely breathless. Um, okay, so the first one was, I made the, so we were talking about the new closet core Jenna pattern last week. And somebody was asking about the way that they instruct you to do the collar in it, because it's slightly different. Um, and I actually admittedly didn't <laughs> follow the instructions because um, I'm quite bad at doing that sometimes because I've made quite a lot of shirts before I just kind of put the collar in the way that I always put a collar in because um, that's just what I'm used to and it meant that I didn't have to read the instructions um, for that particular part of the construction and um, so I didn't do it but somebody's saying that they did um, that they've made the Jenna twice and the collar stand and did the collar stand instructions and collar as it is in the instructions that come with it um, and she said I almost missed, missed it because I was just going to do it my own way but it's such a great method and it's such a clean finish and not too fiddly I love it so she did give it a try and she really liked it um, Okay, so the next question was again about the Jenna what is the difference between the Jenna and the archer and is it is it is it different enough to have both patterns so this is the closet core jenna shirt and the grain line archer shirt so i would say the main differences are the back yoke is a lot deeper in the jenna and um, i also don't think the jenna does the jenna have a pleat at the center back oh i can't remember now um the, the archer does um the way that you construct the button band at the front is different on the archer because you have to actually sew a bit of fabric on to make the button band in the archer but with the jenna you just fold it over um and then i feel like maybe i'm trying to think what my jenna's like i think I think that maybe the shoulder seam sits in a, in a slightly different place. Essentially, they are quite similar. The hems are probably, probably like the biggest difference because there's a shorter version of the Jenna, a longer one that's got like a sort of split hem with a little gusset bit in it, or you can have the dress version with the Jenna um, that's got then the gathered skirt section. I mean, in theory, you could, you could probably fairly easily adapt the archer if you felt confident doing stuff like that to make it have those features um but yeah I, I don't know it depends how much you if, if there's if you're spotting certain features within the Jenna that you like that are not in the archer then maybe it is worth having two patterns I just generally really like shirts and I'm like more than happy to have an excuse to have another shirt pattern because I just really like making them and um, so so yeah I do like having both but I suppose it depends how much you like the archer and if there's things that you feel like are missing in the archer that the that the Jenna has that you feel like you couldn't adapt the archer to have oh I hope that makes sense um would that last blue and white viscose be okay for the Charlie Kaftan, please? Yes, I think it would. Um, 
the LED dress. Yeah, the LED dress would be nice in that abstract one too. Um, okay, the next question was, I'm, oh, about the LED dress. I'm about to make the LED dress from your sewing kit. Um, so when we did the LED dress, it was the Chica Cheetah Viscose, like a plain weave viscose that we included in that. Do I use a rotary cutter or scissors? I personally use scissors and pins because that's what I like using. Um, but there's no reason why you can't use a rotary cutter. I guess it's personal preference. Obviously, especially the skirt pieces are like quite big. So I would say it depends on whether you've got like a cutting mat that's big enough to put your pieces, your skirt pieces out on to then cut it out with a rotary cutter. Um, but yeah, it's just personal preference really in terms of like sort of space and equipment that you've got, mainly the mat. Um, okay, the next one was any tips for sewing with boiled wool? Wishing you well in the weeks ahead. Thank you. Um, so I do. I did have some boiled wool to show you. Um, a little bit further away. I'm kind of worried. Um, you know, boiled wool does tend to be quite sort of thick and spongy. Our boiled wool is also 100% wool. Some boiled wools are viscose, a mix of viscose and wool. This one is 100% wool. Um, and I would say that my tip is, it's not going to be as hard to sew as, as what you think. Definitely try and invest in a wooden pressing clapper if you can. We used to have them and I got them locally made for us. And unfortunately, because the price of wood and labour has gone up a lot since I last ordered them, they were just coming out. It's like really, I was worried they would maybe be too expensive the last time I tried to reorder them. So I'm still sort of thinking about that one. But you can get other pre other pressing clappers are available. Um, but it makes a big difference to when you are working with any woolen fabric, not just boiled wool. Um, so, so yeah, think about a pressing clapper. A walking foot can help as well. Make sure you've got water in your iron so that steam is generated because just, just generally pressing it will really, really help. But otherwise, I think it's not, if you're new to it, don't, don't be scared or anything. It's just, just kind of sew it. It's going to be fine. It's good. Um, what pat, somebody's asking what pattern is the pink dress behind you? Oh, it, it's a paper cut one. <laughs> I can't actually remember what one it's called. Um, I do have a blog post and like a video tour of our window display that gives all the pattern details. Um, but Belle might, if you're watching Belle, you might be able to remind me what that, the axis dress, someone else's picture to it. Um, yeah, paper cut axis dress is really nice. Um, but yeah, if you, you can have a look at our blog post for like more details on that one. Um, Someone's saying, I use a wooden cheese board to make my wool jacket last weekend work to treat. Well, there you go. Saved you buying a clapper. Um, okay, the next question was, any tips for working with viscose, please? Um, so I use micro serration scissors when I cut out viscose and they've got little teeth on the blade so it helps just grip the fabric. I feel like it gives me better control. Plenty pins. Um, I've never personally used it before, but I've heard that some people do use spray starch when they're sewing with viscose and that helps to sort of stabilize it a bit. Um, and then also the other thing that I find really useful is if you've got to do any stay stitching on viscose is if you use some of the prim forming tape interfacing, um, which is basically like a woven interfacing that's cut on the bias and it's got a, a, like a, a stabilizing stitch within it. So you can effectively iron on your stay stitching, which just helps the fabric to stay, it's like not stretch out basically, because it's quite common when you do stay stitching on very lightweight fabrics that the fabric can still distort a bit. But yeah, using forming the forming tape interfacing is really good for that. Um, Okay, the next one was, don't know how much sense this makes. Let's try and work it out. I do the same flat seat adjustment as you. So that's when I make trousers. Um, I do what's called a flat seat adjustment, which is basically where I take some of the length out of the back crotch curve because I've got quite a flat bottom. Um, so that's what a flat seat adjustment is. Um, so I do the same as you do, but when twowling a new trouser, do you always do this from the off? or after sewing, how they fit as designed first. I've made, I've made various trousers and I do generally just do it 
because I usually always know that I need to anyway. So then I feel like making them as per the pattern, I feel like in a way would almost be a bit of a waste of time because I wouldn't, I, I just, because I've made so many different types of trousers, I know that I always need to do that anyway. So, so yeah, I, I, I do just do it. I don't test it first, but that might just be me. Um, oh, it's the paper cut or a dress, not the axis. Thanks, Bill. Um, paper cut or a dress, this one here. Um, okay, the next question was, I've made two pairs of the Style Arc Bob pants, one in cord and one in a viscose linen with lots, a viscose linen with stretch. They both fit nicely when I'm stood up, but when I sit down, there's lots of excess fabric around the tummy below the waistband that balloons up. I'm wondering if you could advise what type of adjustment might be needed or if this is just what to expect with a loose elasticated trouser. I wondered if anyone else had experienced this with similar style trousers. Any advice greatly appreciated. I think it's hard because if you feel like they're fitting you when you're standing up, I mean, you could just... You could like reduce the height of the rise at the front, um, which would take out some of the excess fabric. But then you you might find that then when you're standing up, they just pull a bit lower. So it might just be the nature of the design of that type of trouser. But yeah, if anybody if anybody else has found that, um, that they get that bunching at the front, especially with the style art bog pants, feel free to share your experience. But that's my feeling there. Um, Okay, the next couple of questions were about the Fibre Mood Josephine dress, which we did as a kit last September. Um, I'm making it for my mum, lucky mum. We came in yesterday and chose the fabric, the lovely green fabric Godmother Dolores. That sounds really nice. I'm wondering about the bias neckline. Does a bias strip have to be cut in the 45 degree angle or can I angle it more shallowly? I'd prefer to get the whole thing out of the green stripe if possible but can't do that if I cut it at 45 degrees. I'm a little bit of a stickler for these kind of things and I'm gonna say yes, it does. I don't know, things like that make me uneasy, but it might be, that might just be me because I'm like possibly a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to stuff like that. I would say it does need, the bias does need to be cut out in the 45 degree angle because you need it to stretch. You need to be able to stretch basically and it might just stretch weirdly and like mold weirdly if it's not on a 45 degree angle. But what you can do instead, if you can't get it out, is just piece a couple of bits together. So you can just cut out two strips and then join them together to get the longer strip that you need. You just need to join them with a seam that is also on a 45 degree angle so that that seam can stretch too. So you end up having like your strip. So say that's like your bias strip and then this is your other bias strip and you have to um, make a make a right angle and then stitch diagonally so that or would it be that way so that then when you open it out the seam is on the, the diagonal as well so that the seam stretches too um i hope that makes sense um why not make the continuous binding from a small square yep also a good idea somebody else is saying that their bob pants do that too so the sort of bunching at the front um, there is a there is a group on Facebook, Style Arc Sewists. They may be able to help with bob pants, and that's a good tip. Let's check that out if you're on Facebook. Um, okay, the next one was I have the Donny shirt to make up, but it looks like the front neckline slit is a couple of inches too low for me. Would it just be a case of sewing the front seam up a couple of inches, or would I need to make further adjustments? I mean, obviously, if you sew, so the dot. This is the Friday Pattern Company Donny shirt, actually. I might have one here that I can show you. Let's see if I can fish it out. Um, where did it go? This one here. Um, so, so yeah, this is the Donny shirt here. And, and yeah, I mean, I think in theory you could, it's obviously gonna affect how, how this sort of collar sits here. Like it's gonna make that sort of shorter. I think a couple of inches might, might be a bit, I don't know, it might be a bit too much, like it might, I don't know, it might, you might not really want that bit to be that little, but maybe like a maybe like an inch or an inch and a half might be okay. I think you'd get away with just sewing, yeah, sewing that up a little bit more. Um, I've cut bias facings on a less than 45 degree angle and not had a problem. <gasps> you dear devil, you. Um, okay, well, there you go. So it might be okay. Depends how much of a 
slight off that it is. Um, okay, so the next question was, love these sessions, Lauren, thank you, you're welcome. I have returned to sewing after a 20 year gap and I've made a couple of tops and a dress, wonderful. I've always used cotton or cotton poplin and I wondered if there was another fabric that would be easy for me to sew a summer dress with as I see some lovely pattern fabric. I love the portrait viscose fabric. Are there any other fabrics you would recommend to start my journey again and anything I would need to know to use them? So the, the portrait one that you mentioned is now slightly worried between lots of other fabric. Let's see if I can get it back out again. Um, it's this one here. We did also have this in a navy colour weight, which was really popular. And we have we do have more of that on the way. Um, but this is a really lovely viscose. This, this probably is like a bit more challenging to sew. So it depends whether you want more of a challenge or not. Um, but, it, but it would be lovely to make a nice summer outfit with. Um, and yeah, we were talking about tips for sewing with viscose earlier um but other probably other fabrics that that you could have a look at that are like a little bit more easier to work with are anything that's a seer sucker because it tends to be a little bit more stable so this is an example of a white one here um, and it's a bit more of a sort of cotton but it's got a bit more of a texture in it i don't know if the camera is really going to pick that up um but yeah so a seer sucker is a good one to look out for um and then a linen is also nice as well it's going to be quite easy to work with the rame fabric that we have which is quite similar to linen is also good too or anything that's a cotton linen mix is also going to be pretty easy to work with as well um but if you did want to start getting into fabrics that are a little bit more drapey maybe a viscose linen is a good one to try it's going to have more drape and sort of slipperiness and movement than like a cotton linen fabric but it won't be quite as slippery and lightweight as the 100% viscose, so it's maybe a good way to sort of start building your confidence up a little bit. Um, but yeah, just go for it and give it a try. Um, okay, the next one was, um, oh my word, just found your Instagram and so glad I have. That's great, I'm glad you're here. Any tips you have shared about making kids clothes? I have a toddler getting back into sewing after some time with it packed away as baby brain made it really hard for me and lost my exclusive sewing space to the baby. Um, so, I mean, my, I, when I first actually read this question and now I'm reading it again out, out loud, oh no, it is kids clothes you wanna make. I was wondering whether you wanted to make stuff for yourself or kids, but no, you do say about making kids. So I, th I think the good thing about making kids clothes is that I don't, I don't make all my kids clothes. Okay. I'm going to like be honest about that right now. I make all my own clothes, but I don't make all my kids clothes. But when I do, I'm always like, oh yeah, it's really quick when you make kids clothes because they're quite small. Um, so, and I, and I also, most of the clothes that I make for my kids are also out of jersey or sweatshirting fabric as well. So they're usually pretty quick to make. You don't have to finish off the seam allowances or anything. Um, so my, uh, my, one of my favorite pattern companies for kids clothes is Brindle and Twig. They do all PDF patterns. Waves and Wild is another popular one that's got loads of nice kids clothes. There's Poppy and Jazz as well. We have, and they're all, like all of these patterns are like fairly straightforward as well. We do have Ikati kids sewing patterns, but quite often they've got a bit more detail in them or they're more for woven fabrics. So they're a bit more involved. I would suggest sticking with like the sweat shirting or the French cotton French terry or the, the cotton jersey because they are, they're all fairly easy fabrics to work with and they sew up really quickly as well and you don't have to finish off the seam allowances. And then there is also, if you've not seen it yet, there is the new Tilly and the Buttons kids book that's going to be out as well. And that looks like it's got loads of kind of just classic kids patterns that you could, you know, that you would get lots and lots of use out of as well. So, so yeah, um, I would check out those pattern companies for lots of nice inspiration. Um, somebody's asking, would the viscose linen work for the LED wrap dress? Absolutely, yeah. I think that would be really, really nice. Um, okay, any recommendations for types of material for a dress for myself, but more formal as for a wedding and a plus size, so needs to be full length and hot weather. So I, I would have a look at some of the cashmere dresses because they come with all of the different um, different cup sizes. So you might find that it's easier for you to get a fit with the different cup sizes that come in cashmere, like straight out the packet. 
and they have some really really nice dresses that I think could be more formal for a wedding um, and then I guess it depends what in your mind like what what is more formal for a wedding and um, I would if it's in hot weather definitely try and stick to natural fibers so going for um going for the viscose or the viscose linen is going to be good so some of those ones i showed earlier would be really nice um and then so so one of the patterns that i saw in cashmere at the grafton dress um it's actually for knit fabrics but i think you can make i think it looked really it looked really nice it looked like a fancy dress um so we do have some did i end up bringing some over Oh, I think I forgot to get that one out. Um, we do have some, it's, it's plain, but I think sometimes plain can be quite formal as well, especially if you maybe like dress up with nice accessories or something. Um, we do have a ni really nice tensile jersey, which is, qu which is nice and lightweight. It's really drapey and stretchy and would work nice with that dress. Um, and the Rose Claire dress is like a wrap dress, which has a maxi dress length version. And it'd be really nice in any of the viscose linens that I showed or the viscose prints. Um, so a few ideas there. Um, somebody's saying I made the LED in linen and I love it. Yeah, it is, the LED is really nice in anything. It's just one of those patterns that also looks really nice, doesn't it? Um, just popped in to say thanks and I hope all goes well. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. Um, okay, the next question was, I've got some of your gorgeous muted navy interlock jersey fabric, but I need to figure out what to make. I'd thought about the Anthea dome and sleeve top um, or from pattern rooms or the Maven patterns Somerset tee. So I had a quick look at both of those patterns. This is the interlock here. Um, so it's a bit of a sort of thicker, heavier weight cotton fabric. It does come in other colorways too. And it looks the same on both sides. So it doesn't really have like a right and wrong side, like regular sort of t-shirt weight jersey has. So it's just, it's just a bit thicker. Now it doesn't have a last stain in it. So that means that it doesn't have recovery, like it won't bounce back into shape. So it is stretchy, as you can see, because it's knitted. So it's, it's stretchy because it's knitted, but it's not, it's not, it's not got that additional stretch with the last stain, which means it doesn't have like the bounce back as much. Um, so you just have to bear in mind that you can't, I don't think you can really make anything that's like tight fitted with it because it's just going to sort of bag out and then not look as great. It's better to make something that is more looser fitted. So yes to the Anthea dome and sleeve top from Pattern Rooms, but no to the Maven pattern Somerset tee because that pattern said that it needs the fabric to have elastane and this doesn't have that. So Hopefully that answers your question. Um, okay, the next one was, please can you tell me what the horizontal bolts of fabric, which are always off to your right on the shelves during the live q and I'm wondering if they are possibly linens and whether they'd be suitable to make the Style Arc Harriet jacket. They're actually all stretch fabrics. Um, there's three different colorways of the fabric that has been used to make that cardigan, which is there, um, which is the, is that the Coppelia? the paper cut Coppelia cardigan um, and then this is another one of them here it's like a sort of rib ribbed um jersey fiscal splendid jersey um so so yeah that's the ones that are you can't actually see them in this view on instagram but they're just over there they're all hiding behind lots of fabric rolls today um okay so Lauren's asking, I've just got, hello, I've just got the Thea by tilling the buttons. Do you think the viscose linen in black, of course, would work? Um, yeah, I think it would. I mean, they're quite, because they're quite wide-legged, aren't they? Like, the legs are going to be, like, sort of swishing about all over the place. But, yeah, I think they would. We do also have the enzyme linen blend in black as well which is gonna like hold this, hold the shape and the structure of the trouser a bit more. So I think it probably depends on whether you want the trouser leg to be like ooh, floppy or whether you want it to hold its shape a little bit more. Um, yeah. Okay, the next question here, let's see, I'm getting there. There's still quite a lot to answer. Hopefully some of these are quick answers. Um, a few weeks ago, you mentioned the Seven Berry Indigo fabric, which is this range of fabrics here. It's cotton, but it's got some nice, kind of like Japanese-y inspired designs on them. 
Um, I plan to make a dress, felt it might be a bit too firm. I mean, it is a bit, it is more structured, like it's, you know, it's more of a medium weight cotton. It does hold its shape a little bit more, but you can still make a dress in it. It's just going to generally hold its shape a bit more. Um, I think something like the, the, the washi dress, is that a made by Ray one? Um, I thought that might be quite nice in it. Um, then the next question was, would the Sky Arch floral viscose fabric be okay for the chalk and notch fringe dress? That is this one here, which also comes in a navy colourway as well. Yes, I do think it would be good for the fringe dress. When we did the, fring the chalk and notch fringe dress as a kit, it was a viscose like this that we included in it. And yeah, it does look really nice in that. Um, okay, the next one. Okay, there was a couple about a shirt pattern for boys like a like little boys age four and upwards was one the other one just said little boy shirt and um, the waves and wild sunset shirt is just like a classic little shirt and the waves and wild patterns are really good they're really popular and um, and then in terms of fabric i was thinking that this one would be really fun this is like a kind of sort of like a poplin or like a shirting fabric so it's got a pinstripe in the background wait a minute it's sort of upside down um but then it's got all these fun animals on it but each animal is actually made up of various different animals but you don't really notice that till you look closely but for example, there's like a fish with a rhino's head and stuff. So this is quite fun. Um, but I think that would be really cute for a little shirt. Um, then we've got fabric inspiration for the cashmere at Holyoke, please. So I think if you want something plain, the smooth drape tensile twill would be a good option for that one. It comes in lots of colours. Or the viscose linen prints that I showed before would be really nice. Um, then we've got, please could I see the scale of the tropical banana foliage viscose? Sure, it's right here. Um, it does have a really big scale. I'll open it out so that you can kind of see it and stand back a little bit. That is how big the scale, <laughs> the scale is. It is massive. Um, so yeah, definitely something big for that one. Um, like a night, like a full dress or like a maxi skirt or something. Um, then what would you make with the moleskin fabric? So the moleskin fabric is a type of fabric that we had that was in our sample sale that we had, um, which which we have still got lots of really nice bits in the sample sale online that's all at really good prices as well. That was the event that we had at the end of February. Um, and so for the moleskin, I made the true bias lander pants and some moleskin it was some of the more heavier weight moleskin and they looked really nice but it would also be nice for a jacket like the friday pattern company elford or i also made the sienna the closet core sienna makers jacket which is that one there so you can see that in our window blog post i think that would be nice in moleskin too if it's the lighter weight moleskin then that's quite floppy because we had some that was like heavier weight moleskin some that was lighter weight if it's lighter weight then i think it would be nice as more of like a sort of thicker kind of cozy shirt or like a kind of shacket sty style garment would be nice um or you could i think you, you could make a dress out of it as well but it would feel like a much sort of thicker cozier warmer winter dress um so yeah a few ideas there okay would your pale yellow linens be good for the Nina Lee Portobello trousers and um, this is the pale yellow linen here I think it might be a bit too thin I don't know I probably I think you probably could but I don't know they'd feel very summery you definitely have to make sure the underwear situation you were comfortable with because I feel like they probably are a bit on the thin side sorry and um, then we've got with the Nerida Hansen viscose linen work for the closet core Elodie. That's one of them here, the Nerida Hansen ones. Yes, we've already been chatting about the Elodie and viscose linen. So yes, to that I think would be lovely. Um, inspired by your lovely Sienna jacket, would the stone sanded cotton twill work for it? Yes, I think it would. Um, I actually loved making that. It's, it's, it's such a nice pattern to make. It's very satisfying. Um, 
then the next one was is it possible to do a full bust adjustment on the Ollie shirt please in all honesty i'm not actually sure i don't know it is very oversized so i suppose it depends how much of a bust adjustment you normally do but potentially you might get away with it just because it's quite oversized anyway I don't know because of the way that the sleeve comes in. I'm not sure if anybody who regularly does bust adjustments and knows the Ollie shirt, if you think that it could work, then please share. My feeling is possibly no, though. I think it would be quite complicated. Um, then we've got trouser patterns for the bamboo twill fabric, please. Not too loose and baggy. So the bamboo twill is like a really lovely classic trouser fabric that we've got. It comes in lots of really nice colorways. And it is, it's bamboo and recycled polyester. So it's got a really nice thickness to it, really nice drape. It also has the added benefit that it doesn't crease as well. So it is really, really good for trousers. Um, so I was thinking the Closet Core Pietras have got like a slim leg version that could work. The Mitchell trousers, Closet Core Mitchells do also have a slim leg version as well. Um, and then we've got we've got a little range of the Atelier brunette patterns now the pantaloon trousers um, they look they look a bit more they don't look as sort of big and loose and baggy either so a few options there um, then we've got a hooded jacket pattern suggestion for the Bengaline waterproof fabric please um, so that is this Bengaline fabric here which we've got in a few different colours and and yet like if you if you put water on it will sort of bead and run off so it's not you know you're not going to be able to like survive a complete torrential rainstorm but it is like generally a bit sort of water repellent now i'm sorry i didn't have a chance to look this up beforehand but we were talking about this i think it was last week and there's an itch to stitch pattern I just can't remember the name of it. Um, but if you look at itch to stitch patterns, there's a hooded jacket pattern and that I think would work for the for the Bengaline. Um, then the last one that I've got, and then I'm gonna get all of your questions that you've been asking here um, caught up. So if anybody's getting more, ask them now, because then I'm gonna go back and cover them all. Um, looking for a fabric recommendation for the Sylvia Knit Trousers by Jali Patterns looking for something that has drape, but not as much as a viscose jersey, more like the look of the mustard here. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'm thinking that this might be, whoops, the light went funny there. This might be a good option. It's our loop back jersey fabric, which is made of medal. So it does, it does have quite a lot of sort of floppiness and drape to it, but it is like a little bit thicker because it's a loop back. Um, so, so I think potentially this, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. I feel like maybe you would want, you would want more of like a Ponty Roma or something or like a double knit, but we don't really have that kind of fabric. Um, so this was like the closest thing that I could think of. Okay. Let's see what I have missed here. Cause there were lots of chat going on. Um, Hope all goes well with your new baby. Thank you. Best wishes. Thank you for the very informative videos. You're more than welcome. Just cutting out for the first time ever. I'm using the paper pattern to cut size and not tracing. You have inspired me to trust myself. Good. Well done. Go for it. Um, I saw a pair of viscose theas on Insta and they look nice. Good to know. Oh yeah, I think holding the shape a bit more sounds better. Yeah, go for the go for the enzyme linen blend then. Um or we do have the Rami as well in black, which is more textured than the enzyme linen, but it will hold its shape more. Um I've made the frocks and frolics cool shirt for my son. It's a really nice pattern and good details. I'm about to make him another in that funky animal shirting. That sounds nice. All the best, thank you. I made some Philippa pants with the mole skin, so cozy. Yeah, that they they are gonna be really nice. Um, does it say on your website the weight of the mole skin? I think in the name it does, but I don't think we were actually given when we got the fabric. I don't think we were actually given a GSM for it. It wasn't like available from the supplier. 
but we just sort of subjectively kind of felt them and then called some heavier weight and some lighter weight. But if it's not, if you're not sure and you're looking at one of the mole skins, just email and ask us and like one of the team will go and check and can explain it to you. Um, I normally do a full bust adjustment, but I found I was okay sizing up in the Olia. Okay, good to know. All the very best, thank you. So embroidery threads, bleed colour if washed. Want to embroider, oh, do embroidery threads, bleed colour if washed. I want to embroider a linen dress. Um, I'm gonna say no, probably not. Especially if they're synthetic, which I suspect they probably are. Would the jacquard that is in the kits be okay for an unlined jacket? Yeah, they would be because they are actually reversible. So the reverse of the fabric is basically like the opposite of what you see on the fabric. So like the back of, I can't show you it because it's lined, but the back of this fabric is like where it's all of its cream and where it's cream is all of. Um, so you would need to do, it, it does fray quite a bit this fabric, so you would need to do something to the seam allowances, like binding them might be nice if it's unlined, but it does generally look nice on the inside, so yes. Um, all the best, Lauren. Enjoy every moment of your new baby. Thank you. Um, thanks for all your inspiration. We will miss you. Um, thank you, Lauren. Wishing you all the very best as you welcome your new addition. Thanks for all the best wishes, everyone. Um, is the I2S pattern with the good, the llama? Oh, sorry, I'm not sure what that question means. Um, thanks. Been really enjoying the lives on a Monday. Um, enjoy your time. Thanks for all the lovely best wishes, everyone. Um, I've joined every week since the start. I'll miss you. But yeah, basically I started doing all your messages. Are very kind. You're going to make me cry, guys. Um, I've been doing these weekly videos. Like pretty much, I've, obviously I've missed some weeks. I have been ill and I have like had a few holidays <laughs> um, at times over the years. But I, yeah, I started doing them in... Uh, COVID, during COVID time when we had to close the shop because, you know, shops were closed. Um, and I just felt that it was like a real shame that nobody could like come to the shop and I wanted to kind of bring the shop to you guys. So then that's why I started doing the lives. And then I guess they just sort of caught on and kind of become part of like a regular weekly thing that I did. Um, and yeah, it's been really nice to like, ha like so many people just join live every week and it's really, I feel like we're all friends and helping each other. And it's really nice to sort of see you all every week. Um, I mean, I'm not, see, to be honest, when you've got your own business, you don't really get maternity leave. <laughs> so it's not like I'm saying bye tonight and then that's me um, to put my feet up. Basically, I can't do 14 hour days anymore, which is what I do when I do the Monday live because I still have to work all day and I start work at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, and by the time I upload it to YouTube and everything, it's usually 10 o'clock. Um, and I'm just too tired to do that uh, now. <laughs> Um, because my belly is too big. Um, so, but yeah, I am still going to be like around and working and working with the team to create content for you as well. So yeah, if you missed it at the, at the beginning, we are still going to be creating a nice Q&A sort of style inspiration and video for you that we will release at eight o'clock on a Monday. So you can still get that fix on a Monday evening at eight o'clock um, from us. So that will be, but that will be on the YouTube. You'll need to subscribe to my YouTube channel um, and then you'll see that or you can just go on there and sort of see it anyway. Um, so, so yeah, um, and I will be back. I don't know exactly when. I mean, clearly babies are slightly unpredictable and I feel like I'm just not really sure how long it's going to take for me to get to a point where I can uh, leave the baby reliably at a very specific time uh, for at least an hour and a half because that's kind of how long it takes me to kind of set up and everything. Um, but yeah, it's it's not like there'll be, there'll be no inspiration from us because the new fabrics will keep coming and we'll still be suggesting and lots of things for you to do with all these lovely fabrics. Um, I'm just sort of flicking through all your, all your lovely kind messages. It's very nice of you, all your lovely nice wishes. Thank you everyone. I won't read them all out, but I am, I won't read them all out loud, but I am scanning them. Yeah, I have somehow developed this ability to be able to like read and think and talk at the same time, which I'm not entirely sure how I do that, but I do read everything that you say here. 
and I try to read it out while thinking about it so I am reading it out right now and um, lovely I've got to the bottom thank you very much everybody you're very kind and um, so I'm gonna go now and I won't see you live next week but you will still be able to see something from G&G &G next week um, and and yeah if you if you joined a bit late remember the recording will be on you on my youtube channel later or you can watch it back on instagram as well um so so yeah um remember i am still here it's just that i'm not going to be live every monday so you can still you can still message and everything it's not like i'm disappearing forever um but yeah enjoy the rest of your evening one everyone thanks again for all your lovely wishes so kind i'm very touched um that you're all so lovely and and yeah I'll see you soon in some form. <laughs> Bye.